Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions. And first, I want to take stock of where we're at here on March 1st. It is the first day of meteorological spring. We do things in blocks of three here in the weather world. So let's see where we're at, and then we can see where we're going. But there's Jackson Hole. I mean, just severe clear across the west with this giant dome of high pressure. 468, leading all major resorts in the lower 48. Alta, Snowbird, absolutely beautiful day there in Utah, sitting at 362 for the season. Definitely, though, in need of more snow. We need that in Colorado desperately, but here is the list. I just put this together today. So there's Jackson Hole at the top. Grand Targhee's not far behind, 411. Whistler Blackcomb, that's a place to watch. There are two bright spots to watch in the forecast. One of them is British Columbia, Whistler Blackcomb, and uh, sort of Western Banff, Coastal Range. And the second is going to be a cutoff low that comes in from Southern California and brings some warmer air and will affect the four corners, including southern Colorado. That's one of the other places to watch. So Wolf Creek's probably going to move up this list by the time we get into the end of the week. And you can see the other places on the list. I mean, the bottom line is we just need more snow across a lot of Colorado and Utah, uh, for that matter, and New Mexico, Arizona. And we will get some with this southern track low, but that is the current state of affairs. Radar, satellite, boom. I mean, you can see it. It's a giant dome, severe clear across most of the Intermountain West with all the action being shot up here in the Pacific Northwest. So this is one of the places to watch Whistler Blackcomb and British Columbia over the next, say, five to seven days. The other, you can almost see the clouds going south on the backside. That's going to carry, a, a, uh, carry an area of low pressure that will be cut off. It'll be sucked up by the southern branch of the jet stream, which I'm going to show you, and that becomes a player. That becomes the second bright spot in the forecast. But right now, it's just look at the jet ridging up into Canada. Boy, there's just nothing going on across the Intermountain West for now. All right, so here comes the first change, and this is on Thursday in the morning. Take note, southern branch, subtropical branch of the jet stream becomes more active. It becomes more of a player because the polar branch is way up into Canada. Long gone. We're not going to be able to deal with that for now. So what this does is it carries an area of low pressure in by the time we get into Thursday and Friday, and that becomes the only game in town by the time we get into the uh, end of the week. And that will bring snow to southern Utah, probably just barely brushing the Wasatch, but southern Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, and into Colorado. And that becomes one of the, uh, the snowmakers, and really the only snowmaker for these areas over the next seven days. That's the jet on Thursday. By the time we get into the weekend, the jet stream is back to its same old thing. It's huge, giant ridge over the west, and there's really nothing there. The only other thing to watch is this. You see that dip on Saturday sitting off the west coast there of California? That's the next great hope. Once we get into the weekend, we'll have to see where that dip and that it's, it's basically holding an area of low pressure right there off the coast of California. We'll have to see where that ends up going. And will it be able to break down this area of high pressure that is going to be um, dominating the West all the way into the weekend? It may take some time. It may take some of the power away from it. But that's really the only hope as we get into the weekend as to whether that low and that dip in the jet can really do its thing and break down this ridge. All right, future radar and satellite, there, there's just it's dry across California, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado, New Mexico, the four corners, with all the moisture being pushed up into the Pacific Northwest at this point. And again, keep an eye on Whistler and British Columbia and western Banff areas as we kind of roll into the future. So there's Tuesday morning at 5. Again, all the blue is up there in Canada. Between Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and Wednesday morning, that's pretty much where it stays as well on the future radar. It's really not until we start working our way into a Wednesday that we see any moisture start to come into Southern California and creep into the, into the deserts. It's Again, look at Wednesday. It's still all in the same areas up there. And that's why I think Whistler could pick up, you know, one, two feet, one to two feet, essentially over the next seven days. And I'll show you those numbers in a second. But that's Wednesday morning at a 515. I mean, it's just all, you know, blue bird, blue sky conditions across the West with, uh, with high pressure in control. All right, so let's go to Wednesday. Let's go to Thursday. There we go. So there's our cutoff low. And, and we're going to have to deal with some sort of a rain-snow line because this is coming from the south. It's going to be warmer. 
but you can see the snow in southern Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado. I would focus on the San Juans, the southern mountains of Colorado with this storm if you're going to be skiing on Thursday. And by Friday, Friday's going to be a good ski day. Southern Utah, Taos, Angel Fire, southern Colorado. The storm is exiting by Friday morning. You would have already picked up all of your accumulations. Now beyond Friday, that storm exits and there's nothing for Saturday across the west. I mean, there's that low. You can almost see the green moving into California. That's that storm I pointed out that's going to be kind of sitting with the jet stream. So let's talk accumulations here between today and tomorrow. Nothing. It's all up in the all up in Canada and it's minimal. It's minimal at least on the places I've got identified and even into Wednesday morning there's just nothing there. Really though once we get into Wednesday into Thursday that's when we start to see that low come up from the south. Look at Brian Head, look at Silverton, keep an eye on Wolf Creek and Taos. Those areas including Purgatory would be uh, all good uh, to, to kind of look at into the weekend. So Friday, Friday morning should be good skiing in a lot of those areas and I'm actually surprised to see this much projected um, you know, along I-70 in Colorado, I guess it's possible these southern lows just generally do not deliver very much in those areas unless we get some cyclogenesis off the eastern plains of Colorado, which is possible. It's so far out, but uh, notice it does brush the Wasatch between Thursday and Friday with a couple or three inches of snow. And heading into Saturday, I mean, there's really just not much there. By the time we get into Saturday, that low is gone. But look at Whistler. We've added some more there. And the Projecting by Saturday, you know, a two-foot total accumulation by then, so that's one place to watch for sure. All right, so there you go. There's, uh, There it is, the outlook through Saturday. Not terrific for a lot of the West, but there are a couple of things to watch. Um, so I'll be back tomorrow with an update. Always appreciate you here tuning in here. Take care. Have a good day.